Today, we're gonna kick things off first by debriefing all the Starship activities that went down at SpaceX facilities in South Texas. Then we'll talk about Crew Dragon and Tom Cruise. Yeah, I never thought he'd be a topic of conversation on this channel either, but he is, so carry on. We'll go over some Falcon Heavy current events, this week's honorable mention, and then finish with your questions in Kevin's classroom. That's me, and this is SpaceX in the News. This week we saw SpaceX test Starship like never before. So much so that I literally, literally couldn't even keep up. First off on Sunday morning, SpaceX performed a wet dress rehearsal of SN4, filling her up with methane and oxygen to make sure all systems look good and no major issues arise before moving on to more serious steps. And then later that day, Elon tweeted another upskirt image of the vehicle and it turns out she is a he. Just look at that tiny lonely thruster. It was quite revealing in that it showed off just how off-center of mass the center of thrust is, always to the left. But we'll circle back to that. About 24 hours later on Monday morning, a second wet dress rehearsal was performed, as well as what was speculated to be a possible engine chill-down. Regardless of what exactly was done, Elon followed up with a statement that the liquid methane got too warm, or not as cold as it should have been. So they ended it. Elon also welcomed another son into the world on Monday evening, Happy Derp Day, little guy, whose name confuses me. May the 4th be with you, always. Another 24 hours went by, and on the morning of Tuesday the 5th, SpaceX successfully performed a pre-burner spin-up of the engine, making it the first time a Raptor engine has done so in Boca Chica since the days of Starhopper. Then later that same day, everyone must have been on their A-game because the engineers lit that puppy up as soon as the roads closed for the first static fire of a Starship vehicle. and everything must have went well because Elon said it passed. And as if that wasn't enough action for all of us sleep-deprived pocket rocket nerds, SpaceX performed an encore on Thursday morning, only this time feeding fuel to the Raptor engine from the header tanks. During the show, some concerned spectators asked about the flare stack flame out that occurred, and Elon said, don't worry chaps, in a few weeks, it won't even be around anymore to provide you with an early warning of boom time, because soon they'll be recondensing the methane using solar power. Did you hear that? using the warm sun to re-chill the gas back to a liquid. Elon's hacking science and using it against itself. Oh, behave, baby. But if you think that's wild, you're wrong. What's wild is that Super Heavy will have 31 engines in the same place as that single engine. Yes, we're back down to 31. It's no longer 37. Also, no big fins. The legs will be similar to Starship's. The thrust dome, of course, is the super hard part because there will be dozens of engines pressing on that lower bulkhead, each producing up to 250 tons of thrust. And lest we forget, just the other month, SpaceX was struggling with a single hydraulic press simulating a single Raptor engine. So yeah, 31 is super serial. I am super duper serial. And as far as Raptor vacuum is concerned, SpaceX is about a month away from testing it. Casper over at Stanley Creatives put together another nice animation of what the Starship Moonship may look like when it does eventually take people and cargo to the surface of the natural satellite, basing it off the pictures SpaceX and NASA released last week. He included the solar panels at the nose of the ship, the cabin windows, radio landing thrusters, and deployable legs. Elon did say they are going to try to land Starship on the moon with enough propellant to return it to Earth. A fully burdened Starship Super Heavy cost for 150 tons to orbit will probably be around $1.5 million, which is considerably cheaper than a $50 million Falcon 9 launch. For a trip to the moon, the cost would increase about two to three times that, and 10 times for a trip to Mars. Still insanely cheap compared to all the rest. But we're not there yet, even though, to quote the lawyer wife, SpaceX is producing starships faster than I can produce a respectable image. SN5 is all there, just some assembly required. And yeah, it doesn't look like it will be getting any fins, but you never know, could still happen. Elon did say a couple weeks back it may not receive them. And look, SN6 decided to join the party as well. This one should definitely be receiving fans in the near future. Yesterday, SN4's Raptor engine was removed and transported from the launch site down Highway 4. Whether the ship will receive another Raptor engine in the future is not yet known. I think we can assume so because the last we heard from Elon, SN4 was going to do a 150 meter hop. So if it does get one, maybe they'll be installing it in the dead center. We'll see. It probably won't be for a couple weeks. Tonight, we're going back to another cryo test for SN4. Perhaps the engineers are looking to see if anything shook loose after all the recent vibrations. But we're gonna move on to Dragon News now. Trust me, don't change the channel. You're gonna wanna see this. 
First, the Crew Dragon capsule that will take NASA astronauts to the International Space Station is at the Cape and has undergone final preparations for the Demo-2 mission that will launch on May 27th. Bob and Doug are just within three weeks away from liftoff, which means their training is complete and thus commences their souvenir hoarding. Hey, I want a patch. But here we go. The exciting news for the week belongs to none other than Tom Cruise, who was first reported to be scheming to shoot a movie in space by the Hollywood press, only to be confirmed the next day from my boy Jim himself. Quote, NASA, and Kevin, is excited that Tom Cruise will be filming aboard the space station. We need popular media to inspire new generations of engineers and scientists to make NASA's ambitious plans a reality. I strongly agree, Jim, which means this time the movie needs to be better than Ad Astra. I'm sorry, but that was a decroted piece of crap. Gaw! But at least Elon will have a lot of fun with it, regardless of the outcome. We can't expect that he's going to make a cameo appearance, right? So Tom will be going to the space station aboard a Crew Dragon capsule with most likely a camera crew of astronauts, if that. Tom basically runs the show behind the scenes of his movies and does everything himself, so he very well may be just going up alone and filming the movie on a selfie stick. But breaking reports seem to suggest that one of Axiom Space's former NASA astronauts is expected to go with him. It was reported back in 2016 that Tommy did receive astronaut training from NASA in the past, including some time in their neutral buoyancy laboratory. At the time, he was working on Space Station 3D, which he also narrated, but he also wanted to fly aboard the shuttle for it. However, after Columbia exploded in 2003, he was discouraged from pursuing the idea further. And in 2013, Cruz also showed interest in purchasing a seat to space from Virgin Galactic. I don't think that ever happened, though. Tom Cruise is known as one of the few in Hollywood to do most of his own stunts. He's like the American version of Jackie Chan. Only he literally, literally, flies planes and helicopters, throws himself out of them, or travels on them the wrong way. He also climbs down buildings like Spider-Man or leaps them like Superman, only to break his ankle, but still choosing to film with it. He also has quite the battle cry. But the best part about this whole story is that I have always been a fan of Tom Cruise's work. Say what you want about him, but he's definitely dedicated to his art. But that's just me. I'm able to distinguish between his professional life and his personal life. The lawyer wife cannot. One of the first movies we saw together was Jack Reacher, and ever since we have been divided on the issue of Tom Cruise. She calls his acting one-dimensional. I say that's fine with me, so long as that single dimension is him roundhousing some chump through a plate glass. I literally, literally have to tread lightly when I say his name around her. Carrie, what do you think about Tom Cruise? I don't. NASA has decided to ditch the plan to launch the first two modules of its Gateway Lunar Space Station on separate rockets, and will now be launching both the power and propulsion element, as well as the habitation and logistics outpost, together under the same fairing. This will reduce the complexity of rendezvousing two rockets in orbit, and then routing power, fluids, and what have you through the docking mechanism. But whose rocket and fairing will they be using for this singular mission? Well, while there are a few potential options NASA could choose from, only SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket is currently operational and up to the task, especially now since they are already developing a larger fairing for military contracts, which is why NASA decided to make the switch over to begin with. The next SpaceX launch on the books is a Starlink mission, and it's scheduled for May 18th at a disgusting 3 in the morning. You might be able to catch me awake for this one. Place your bets. Once the Constellation begins its beta later this year, it will only be available to those living at higher latitudes like Seattle or London. Now it's time to move on to our honorable mention. Space Force is back for another turn as our honorable mention this week. Hoo-ya! Actually, you know what? They need their own battle cry. Hula hoop They released their first recruitment ad this week showcasing all the space techie tech they have to offer their ambitious recruits, who will no doubt get to boot camp only to have their dreams shattered by the reality of watch duty. Maybe your purpose on this planet isn't on this planet. Netflix also released their trailer for the upcoming Space Force series starring Steve Carell, who plays a four-star general tasked with establishing the sixth branch of the United States Armed Forces. The comedy is set to release at the end of the month. And even though people in our very own space community also mock the idea of having a space force, I've been a supporter of it from the beginning. But still, I'm going to watch this show and enjoy it thoroughly. And so is Space Force General Jay Raymond, Steve Carell's counterpart, who jokingly told Carell to get a haircut during this week's Space Foundation webinar. What? All right, now listen up. It's time to take your questions in Kevin's classroom. No, 
yelling on the bus! Hi Kevin, my name is Brock. I'm a sixth grader from Orlando. I was wondering why hydrogen is a more efficient rocket fuel than other propellants such as RP-1 or methane. Excellent chemistry question, Brock. When we speak about fuel efficiency, we use the term specific impulse. In this case, the measurement of how effectively a rocket uses propellant. Liquid hydrogen, or LH2, provides about a 35% higher specific impulse over most other fuels. And the secret to its success lies in the sheer fact that it has the lightest molecular weight of any known substance. See, the end game of producing the best propellant all comes down to how fast you can push exhaust gases out the end of a rocket nozzle. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So you want the fastest action downward as possible to get the fastest reaction upward as possible which is obtained by having a very energetic fuel and more importantly, minimizing the molecular weight of the exhaust gas. But like every other propellant, LH2 does have its drawbacks. It wouldn't be rocket science without that. Hydrogen is a low density propellant, which means you need more of it on a rocket. More fuel calls for bigger tanks and bigger tanks means more weight, ultimately negating its high specific impulse anyway. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. These videos would not be possible or at least not good without the generosity of my eccentric members. If you would like more space-related content in your week, with perhaps a sprinkle of shenanigans, check out the description or join button below this video. Have a nerminal weekend, and until the next one, Godspeed.